this morning um, that I've chosen is Titus 2, 11 through 14, and it reads like this. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for this blessed hope the glorious appearing of our God and Savior. Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do good. There's at least five questions that I found that I think we can answer from scriptures about doing good. The first one is, when should we do good? As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. The message translation of this verse says, every time we get the chance. Every time we get the chance to do good. I wonder how many times that is in a day. We don't really know. I wonder the difference though it will make if we will begin looking for opportunities to do good. First Titus 3.1, which follows this main passage, Paul thinks it's important enough to say it again. So in a different way, he instructs Titus to remind the people to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good. So I don't think it's going to be a stretch for us to say that the time for us to do good is any time and all the time. The second question I think we can find in scripture to answer is how can we do good? This isn't something that's always easy for us in our own strength. Now, some of you can. Some of you are just generally nice people. You, it's easy for you to be nice and to always do kind things and to always do good. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it, we kind of have that tug in our spirits and in our hearts when God wants us to do something. And, you know, we kind of have that conversation back and forth with God. Surely that's not what you mean for me to do. However, I look through the scriptures and I don't find where it says, do good if it's easy for you. Do good if it's somebody you like. Do good if it just fits into your schedule. God is telling us that he wants us to do good. It's during these times that we need to be reminded that we don't have to do it in our own strength. Psalm 37.3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. I almost wonder, throughout the scriptures, there's tons and tons of encouragement as how we can help from not becoming weary. God tells us, Lean on me, trust in me, come to me, work in my power, not your own power. So I think he's telling us not to be weary, and then the rest of scriptures are full with how we can keep from being weary and doing good. Psalm 34, 14 gives us another um, insight. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. A third question is, who are we to do good for? As I was looking through who we're to do good for, I found several groups of people. The first one is the family of believers. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That's the people right around you. That's the people sitting in the pews with you. Um, that means if somebody's having a hardship, some of you that can cook can uh, cook a meal. Some of you have different gifts and different talents, so there's different ways that we can do good to one another. Sometimes it's as simple as holding the door open as your friends come through the door. Um, when we're being intentional, when we're looking for ways to do good, God's going to show those to us. Another group of people that I found the scripture says that we're supposed to do good for is our enemies. You guys know this verse, Luke 6, 27. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Another group of people that I found were to do good to is others. You guys kind of hear the bong going off here. I think we're um, about to encompass everybody we know at this point. Do not forget to do good and to share with others for such sacrifices God is pleased. So I think there's not a box there that says these are the people that we do good for and these are the people that we don't have to do good for. I think it's anyone that God puts in our path. A fourth question is, why should we do good? This is what we were created for. Remember the first verse that God calls us to be his own people who are eager to do good? Ephesians 2.10, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
I wonder if sometimes doing good is sharing good advice, sharing with people what we know. Sometimes you guys have insight into other people's lives. Maybe it's just a small situation that you can say, you know, I tried this and I used to do it that way, but now I do it this way and I think it's easier. Sometimes you doing good is sharing your experience and your expertise with someone else. Another example is maybe doing good is utilizing what you have. In the book of Esther, there's a man named Haggai. Do you guys remember him? He helped Esther to find favor with the king. Haggai or Haggai was a servant. Um, he was a servant that lived there in the palace, and it says that he found favor, that Esther found favor with him, so he helped her in turn to find favor for the king. He set her up for extra beauty treatments, special food, and maids. Okay, let's stop right here. How many of you ladies need to find a guy like that to work in your castle? Um, I'm going to put the ad out later, and if I find one, I'll let you know. Um, but we know that because of just his simple investment in Esther, he helps her to find an audience before the king. We know the end of that story, Esther ends up being able to save hundreds and hundreds of Jewish lives. So maybe just this small significant act of doing good, and he used what he had um, to be able to affect a difference in the life of Esther. What about the story of the little boy's lunch? Jesus didn't go and ask him to feed 5,000 people, did he? Jesus asked him to give what he had. The little boy had an opportunity to do good at that time and the difference that it made. Another example of what doing good might be for us is setting an example. Maybe doing good means not doing something, taking the opportunity not to respond. We have those sometimes. Sometimes we feel like it's significant for us to put our two cents in, whether it's really needed or not. Sometimes we have the chance to make a tacky or an inappropriate comment, but then we also have the chance not to. It's in Ephesians 8, 10, 8 through 10. This comes from the message. You groped your way through that murk once, but no longer. You are out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way plain, so no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true, these are the actions appropriate for daylight hours. Figure out what will please Christ and then do it. <laughs> 